Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new uh, Eurostruck uh, live uh, talk for today. So, uh, joining us uh, for this uh, uh, Eurostruck talk, we have I, my name is uh, Juan Casas. I am professor at the Technical University of Barcelona in Catalonia, and I am the vice president of Eurostruck. And joining me uh, today as also moderating the session is uh, Professor Eleni Chatsi. She's a professor at the ETH in Zurich and is also a member of the Executive Committee of Eurostruck. And also uh, the presenter for today is uh, Dr. Alfred Strauss, who is a professor of structural mechanics at the University of Natural Resources and Life Science, Science in Vienna, and also a very active member and member of the Executive Committee of uh, Eurostruck. So in a few minutes, uh, Professor Schatzi will make the introduction of the, our speaker today. But first, to start with that, I would like to make some remarks. Uh, the first one is about the survey that is running on Facebook and Zoom uh, about the resilience of critical infrastructure to pandemic situation. This survey is now uh, running and all the people in the audience are uh, invited to proceed to fill this uh, survey, which is on Facebook or in, in Zoom. Also, uh, I would like to acknowledge the support of some uh, institutions and companies. First of all, uh, ECC and the University of Minho for supporting these uh, presentations. Also, YAPSE, the International Association for Bridges and Structural Engineering, FIB, the Federation International du Vuitton, and finally also uh, the company Boutique. Uh, uh, remark, important remark is about how to make the questions. For those that you are following the, on, on Facebook Live, you should place questions directly there, okay? And for those that are in the Zoom, you should send your questions to the chat that is open in the Aerostruck Association account. And the, fa the final remark is on the logistics. So I, I ask you please to switch off the microphones and the cameras during the world talk in order to get uh, better connections and to follow better the presentations. So after that, I will pass the word to Eleni Chatsi, who will make the introduction of the speaker. Eleni, Thank please. You. Thank you, Jean. So it's actually a pleasure to uh, moderate today a talk by a member of the Eurostruct Association. And this is uh, Professor Alfred Strauss, uh, who is a professor of structural mechanics at the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences in Vienna since 2008. Alfred obtained his diploma with honors from the Technical University of Vienna in 1997 and continued to obtain his PhD in stochastic probabilistic engineering from Boku in 2004. He is an experienced researcher and also acts as consultant engineer for advanced structural analysis problems that relate to bridges, roof systems, offshore systems, and other types of infrastructure components. He has authored more than 200 scientific publications and is uh, recognized with a number of, of awards for his work in this domain of structural safety and reliability and further serves as a committee member of a number of associations in this area, including IALSE, IADMAS, and IASAD. And in this talk, he will be discussing international activities associated with the lifetime performance of existing infrastructure systems. So I pass the floor at this point to Alfred for the talk. Okay, so welcome everybody. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Johan, for your uh, nice introduction. I am uh, very happy to, to have this opportunity to talk today about this topic, activities, international activities associated with the lifetime performance of existing infrastructure systems, or in particular, um, for instance, I will focus on, on concrete structures and, and uh, bridge structures. So uh, my idea for this talk is as follows. So welcome everybody to this talk. My dear, I wanted to show you a little bit the developments of the last years that we had performed in our cost action and now in, that shifted over to the Eurostruct. 
In particular, we focused here on this lifetime's performance uh, issues, uh, focusing mainly on the existing systems structures. And uh, we had also initiated from our uh, discourse action from the Eurostruct uh, activities in the IAPSE uh, organization, like in the Commission 5, as you can see here. Uh, it is focusing one of the part we are, we are also now included are, for instance, the structural management systems. And uh, we are also uh, somehow supporting now this development of the model code 2020, which also has a very important or doing very important steps now forward in this direction of existing structures. So this is the scope to show you a little bit the overall picture and the framework that has been developed. And uh, then uh, in the next step, what are important steps, for instance, for the Eurostruct organization, and then uh, perhaps also for next uh, research topics. So uh, first of all, I would like to give you this uh, concept of the, an overview about the concept about the cost 1406. So now it, most of the members shifted to the, as mentioned already, to the Eurostruct, uh, Eurostruct organization. It's a European platform, but acting international. Uh, and we had in the cost 1406, the topic, the quality specification for road bridges. I think now we opened it a little bit more to general structures. And our idea in the 1406 was the standardization on a European level. So standardization with respect to evaluation, inspection, assessment, and so on. So we had uh, the following objectives in this project. We had uh, objectives to develop a guideline for the establishment of such quality control plans because we we know that uh, the different countries in, in Europe uh, have different inspection, assessment, and evaluation plans. We wanted to systemize the knowledge to such uh, quality control plans, to update the knowledge, in particular also to shift over to the performance indicator concepts, and then uh, to set all the quality specifications, and to, of course, also uh, somehow manage it that is still uh, possible to use by practicing engineers and to create some databases that helps us, for instance, for research, for optimization, and also for the next steps in the lifetime performance of the future time. So our idea was, uh, or more or less the scientific program in the cost 1406, where chair was uh, Jose Matos and Johan Casas, uh, Professor Johan Casas was the co-chair, was the following. We said in working uh, group one, there we have the performance indicators. So we know from inspection, most performance indicators just at the moment on national level are related to technical indicators. We, in our first working group, we are, I chaired it together with uh, Anna Mandit. Um, we just focused also on uh, additional indicators like environmental indicators, then uh, secondary cost indicators and so on. So this was our first work of working group one. In the working group two, there was the goal, uh, in particular, to define to such uh, indicators the goals. Also, then of course, in the technical uh, associated with the technical indicators, associated with environmental indicators, and so on. And the working group three, which is more really now the the main engine uh, in this uh, in this overall uh, project here was to really set up until and to establish this quality control plan. So idea was here to use basin networks, to use advanced methods in order to then uh, uh, use the findings for the performance indicators for the goals to somehow merge it together and to bring it to a uh, management level. Because up to now, working group one and two were more working on the classical inspection on the operation level. And Finally, in working group four, uh, we developed or it was developed some case studies to show exactly how it runs and how we can uh, this uh, concept, this framework used in real in practice and to also compare it with the existing uh, system, how it, uh, which, which benefits or which advantages it. And working group five, which is now uh, at the moment, which is somehow already of course uh, finished, but we're still running here in uh, uh, bringing our knowledge to, for instance, to the SEN level, to the, uh, also to the FIB level, to the EAPS level. So our knowledge, we are now in this transfer dissemination process. 
So what we did in the uh, in this project or in working group one, for instance, we just contacted most of the European countries. So you can see here all the countries that we contacted. We get uh, really to most of them really good uh, uh, access to the stakeholders and to some representatives, uh, uh, people who uh, are dealing with this topic of inspection asset management. We ask them to go through their national documents for inspection, evaluation, assessment, docu and assessment documents, and ask them to for us to screen their um, with respect to performance indicators, to indicators, and to the very significant information that is needed for such a, an a European uh, quality control plan. What we find out at this level was uh, it was not that easy. We had to define at this level different uh, levels. For instance, what is exactly a performance indicator? You can see here some uh, definition. What is an indicator? What is an observation? What are, for instance, damages, damage processes? So this was already a very, very intensive process, but more or less, we could uh, manage it quite good. And also, what are the performance goals? So these were really big discussions. So it allows us, after this process, you can see here, we find about 375 terms from the European uh, documents, also some from, we had also relations to US and uh, China, also from this we had some input, but more or less from the European countries, we find out there are 375 terms that are used in inspection and that we are just indicated as this status performance indicators. So we, based on our definitions, we were lucky to can now a little bit structure it. We structured it in indicators that are really necessary to assess the bearing capacity, to assess uh, the current load capacity of the structure, performance indicators second order, observations which do not have, for instance, an uh, immediate effect, and damage process and other data. We, had, we could also assign these uh, different categories to the levels of material, to the component level, to the system level. So you can see we could reduce now our indicators which are must or are uh, essential for the quality control balance uh, to at least a uh, small number, less than 30 performance indicators. This information was just stored and uh, was uh, categorized in a database that is now in this cost 406 database uh, you can find in this database. Our next level was then, we are now on this inspection level. So these performance indicators are still do not have an uh, really essential uh, information or some information for the management level, but we have to now shift over to somehow to the management level, to the asset management level. So it was necessary this step, and this was uh, in this uh, working together from working group one to working group three, to define these KPIs, which are called key performance indicators. And as soon as key performance indicators allows us also to shift in the level of the lifetime performance. So as key performance indicators, mainly a, a discussion and a work in the working group two, we could define based on some already existing uh, yeah, methods that this must be, in our opinion, uh, at least the reliability, the safety. You can see here a small definition. The availability of a system a structure, the safety for a human, for instance, and also the economy and the environment. Finally, you can see here now in this topic, this uh, five uh, or in this block, see the five, to five topics. And beneath that one, there you can find our performance indicators. So it means we find out in this uh, work now here, some relation between performance indicators, key performance indicators that can be transferred in such a spider and in the spider, we have now here a rating, a condition rating system proposed that is similar to an existing inspection uh, process. So from uh, with some condition of one to four. So finally, this spider is now uh, prepared that uh, for, for instance, such an asset management uh, procedure or project. So this, uh, processes that I showed you here are very well documented now in this working group one report and also in the working group two report while the working two 
2 report with the goal is also somehow also address the cost uh, optimization and multi criteria optimization topics. But more or less, you can find this in this uh, documents here. So, but we still have not addressed at this moment the quality control plans. So now we shift over to the next step, or we shifted in the project over to the next step, to the quality control plan. Quality control plan, as you can remember, we had now to do with the performance indicators, with the different other terms, observation that you find on your site here. Uh, so classical, this is a classical description of a situation of a structure. You have some uh, specific, uh, uh, yeah, uh, observations on the structure and also condition rating. And now with the condition rating, we must come over to this reliability level. I showed it before in this box, but we still have not exactly defined this uh, link here from condition ra uh, rating, so with the number one to five, to the reliability index, and then uh, how it moves on to the lifetime performance. So this uh, specific step was one uh, main key point uh, that, is treat, that was treated in the working group three. So in the working through uh, three, uh, this main uh, element was now that we link a resistant reduction factor for, for instance, a vulnerable zone. And this uh, resistance reduction factor, you can uh, somehow estimate or somehow make an assessment with respect to an inspect classical inspection. That means, for instance, when you have uh, 0.65, for instance, in a banning situation, that means you uh, perhaps uh, are here uh, with respect to the red line or blue line in an uh, already and condition rating from the classic condition rating of inspection in four. And now the key element that was now linked was we can, this uh, numbers one to five, the conditions, we can link it to the reliability index. And by the reliability index, we can then link it to the reliability of failure. And finally, with the probability of failure, we can then have an uh, access to the timeline. So to the lifetime performance. And uh, of course, then in a consequent uh, step also to maintenance scenarios. So this diagram here is more or less really one key element. And when we go to the next slide, uh, what I explained to you a little bit, this was then also elaborated in the working group three. So mainly the performance indicator based inspection, which are now here in these red zones, means you have a failure mode, you, we have defined the performance indicators, we have uh, structural information that runs here to this red bottom uh, reporting of the of your structural information, you define your vulnerable zones, and you also define your damages or your performance indicator information here. And in the next step, what we did in the, in the former slide, what I showed in the former slide, you have now here the, over, uh, the, the link to the asset management uh, level by the reliability index. That means you have here three, for instance, you categorize it by three, and here with the link to our uh, this diagram before, you can have the reliability index, for instance, three. So our next level is now the maintenance scenario. With the reliability index, we have the timeline, and we can estimate also the development in the time. For instance, the next 15 years, you have a decrease of the beta index, and now you have the uh, access to this uh, spider here, this reliability safety, healthy, uh, or with durability, safety, and availability. So this is the process plan or quality control process process plan. We can also shift that one in such a diagram here. That means the spider, we saw our five uh, axes here, can be, uh, when we shift it to the timeline, uh, also illustrated in that way here. That means the reliability is moving down due to a degradation process that was just uh, de uh, detected by, for instance, the inspection. And then uh, uh, also here, this is a classical uh, degradation process down and then uh, again an, uh, an intervention. Means we have then the cost effects. This is the third spire, the thir third axis of the spider. We have to in, uh, just invest in something. And we have the availability of uh, such intervention during such intervention or going down of the structure. And we have the safety issues. And now uh, with this concept, we have not only here the possibility to make an assessment in one point of time, we can of course now with prediction models go in the future. 
and we can uh, select between reference uh, um, maintenance plan and between preventive maintenance plan, for instance. So this is already a predefined maintenance plan. This can, of course, also be described in the 3D. So uh, I think we, we here have uh, now a very open new framework. So this framework can open, of course, different possibilities and also to work through uh, these different uh, lifetime uh, assessment methods. But we still know we have uh, still to do something uh, or do some research or do some more elaboration in these fields. In particular, uh, after the cost action, we just started also the setup uh, in different organizations like in the APSO and the FIB or also there are other ones, I'm in these two included here. We set up uh, some more um, research fields or activities there. The one is in the Commission 5 in the existing structures. It is just chaired by Rade Heidi and uh, by Jose Matus. And um, I will show you some of the present research activities there. Uh, me and uh, Paul, we are just uh, here looking um, with respect to this last graphs here uh, on this maintenance plan. So which different uh, management strategies can be, for instance, uh, performed or are already installed in, in, the, in the organizations. So that means in the DG 5.4, we're just looking on the management systems which are there. So we have here the following objectives in the DG 5.4. We make a uh, survey of existing structure management systems. Uh, we in contact uh, with most of the stakeholders that were already in the cost action 1406. We would to see which uh, uh, also not only the management system but also its decision making models already implemented and how they fit in such uh, of our concepts in the framework, how they can be implemented. We wanted to also to evaluate the best practice and uh, also to see in which way the research already uh, was included in this uh, system still. What we have uh, also as a big, uh, very, very big advantage is we have people from, uh, from uh, various countries, we have different stakeholders in it, uh, from the operators, from academics and consulting. And I think this is, uh, this is the, somehow the necessary, uh, the required or necessary point that we need in such an, uh, research and such an activities. The scope at the moment, uh, we have it, we, we focus on bridges. However, in the next steps, it could, this system and also this uh, research can be shifted to other systems like offshore dam system, power plants and so on. What we already uh, um, yeah, finished or what we, are what we will finish is soon. We had, uh, first of all, three uh, articles or three reports on this topic now, which will by end of this year, beginning of this next year already, is about the survival and the implemented decision-making models. Then uh, the management systems, that is the second uh, paper or report on the best practice and those are the promising res research results will be documented there. And then in the third uh, article or report, we are just focusing on the bridge gapping between the research, between the decision-making models that are at the moment used. Yeah, so this was about the uh, EAPS. Now another very important field, and I think we are we with, with the Eurostruct and this the cost action framework can support or we support already there, is the development of the model code. The FIP model code is uh, focusing on concrete structure. In particular, we have, uh, as already mentioned, the FIP model code 2020 is uh, about existing structures, existing concrete structures. Uh, chaired by Messi Stewart and uh, by Agnieszka uh, Bilet. And uh, we are here, uh, have the responsibility for the Commission 3 about the existing structures. So it's uh, Robbie Caspele and me in this, uh, which are, uh, can uh, here organize these activities a little bit. So the model code that you see a little bit the background uh, developed already since 1970, it was the first model code. So this was just uh, a starting of the model code and it shifted up to 2010, it was still on new structures or on the models. 
now in 2020, uh, a compre uh, comprehensive provisions are also for the existing structures. And also we have here with the Asian African model codes that also go in this direction. So uh, the objectives of the 2020 model code is that we have the interna international research and industrial materials knowledge should be implemented. It should be also implemented the life cycle management of existing structures. It should bring together the knowledge and experience for the new but also for the existing and life cycle management for the existing structures. So you can see here, it's really absolutely up to time. And uh, you can see here was the requirement uh, yeah, of going in this direction. So the, only to give you a short uh, overview about what is the content, the 2010 model code, as you don't, perhaps uh, most of you know already about it, was just structured in five parts. It was about general design input data, design, construction, conservation, and it has around 400 pages and 10 chapters. These are the main 10 chapters. There was already something about conservation. And now in the 2020 model code, this conservation part here will be transferred to these uh, former uh, chapters here and will include here in particular, the points with respect to existing structures and uh, assessment of existing structures. So we will have more or less than nine parts uh, in 2020 and 35 chapters. Then. So this was just provided here, this uh, information by Stuart Hill, who is the chair of the model code uh, 2010. What I think is also a very important part with respect to Eurostruct in the framework we were just uh, looking at the moment uh, on the existing structure, but uh, for the next future steps, which could become a very, or should become a very key topic is of course the sustainability. In the model code, uh, there is already an overarching framework for the sustainability. So we define, for instance, in our way, the performance indicator technical environment uh, in the model code, they define also more the social performance, the environmental performance, economic performance, and also the resilience. I think uh, we also in the Eurostruct, and I think also in the next research, uh, associated research fields, also this will, should become a topic there. Also in the model code, uh, there are uh, somehow defined the uh, sustainability goals. Uh, there was a big discussion about the sustainability co uh, goals uh, formulated by the uh, UN. Uh, so is it, uh, is it possible for us so that do we fit with our infrastructure systems or structures to such sustainability goals? When we just take a look a little bit uh, on that, we can say with the infrastructures, with the existing structures and uh, with trying to uh, extend and to uh, proceed with our lifetime performance, we of course fulfill here some already a lot of these sustainability goals. So from no poverty, from good health and well-being up to sustainability cities and communities. So you can see here we really have a lot. Uh, we are responsible also here in this field of the sustainability goals. So uh, what is also in uh, an interesting point in the model code and what I think uh, fits also in the Eurostruct or in our framework and the quality control framework, lessons learned from the, from the old structures. And uh, that, uh, for instance, is one action group in the, concrete, in the action group 19 in the F model code, where we take particular care on uh, the time effects of some models. For instance, chloride diffusion coefficients, uh, the change in the time. So in our prediction models that I sketched a little before in our, in these uh, graphs, uh, in the prediction models, we have to take care also on such effects. For instance, here on the diffusion coefficient or the change of the shrinkage that is just as, uh, assumed in the 1990 as a decreasing part here, but with compressive strength, we have here some uh, other effects inside. So in order to get more accurate with our predictions, in this lifetimes performance predictions, we have to take care of on such things. So this will be also future research topics. What I also see here is uh, a very important field. I mentioned we are responsible at the Commission 3 for that. Uh, 
the topic of reliability and safety evaluation. We have here to take into account risk, reliability targets. We have to take into account or include those in such frameworks, probabilistic analysis topics, full probabilistic or semi-probabilistic uh, topics. Then also what we have to take into account are, for instance, these activities in the 3.2, modeling of structures and their performance, uh, to check the models that are developed for new structures or for new materials, if they are still appropriate for the existing one, then to incorporate the duration effects, reducing, for instance, the resistance, but also incorporating the loading effects. And on uh, the other side, on the other side, decision-making uh, models, for instance, uh, 3DT and the TJ 3.3, uh, simplified and advanced assessment techniques. So not all of us will uh, use or just apply advanced methods at the beginning. So we did also some simplified methods. Then uh, also tools and techniques for surveys and the structure is on topic. And also what is important to address this level of approximation to say, okay, which accuracy I need on the structure and uh, which method, for instance, simplify or advanced is now my appropriate one. And what is the benefit value of information, for instance. Also in the 3.3 or in this Commission 3, we implemented the monitoring information that was up to now not uh, included. For instance, here, a concept. We know we also going with our quality control framework in the timeline, but also with the monitoring. We must follow this uh, one and uh, that could also bring us the value of information there. Another uh, point that we have in the Commission 3 is, are of course, also in the interventions and in the forensic engineering. So in other words, the work of Commission 3, uh, there are members of our Eurostruck organization are now also working more or less in this commission, uh, address a lot of topics that can help us to develop this quality control plan to a next step and also the asset management. So I can conclude the following lifetime performance of existing system or existing structures. Uh, what we find out from the cost action 1406 and also from the Eurostruct now it's a multidisciplinary mission and it requires really the interaction of different disciplines. So not only from an engineering basis, but also from the different fields of environment of uh, IT technology, digitalization and so on. Uh, what is a big uh, challenge is, of course, to link uh, together the classical methods, what we understand uh, for inspection and assessment, to the methods of digitalization and information. We can say uh, with the project, with the 1406 projects, uh, that the cost 1406 and Eurostar was an excess, was a success, was a big success. In particular, the framework that has been developed is really a basis for next steps there. And also it offer, uh, opens us for new complex multi-layer missions the next uh, forward year. So that is a little bit the, an uh, introduction, small appetizer for the discussion now. And I wanted to acknowledge also the cost 1406, the Eurostruct, the Apps and FRP who supported here and where we can work with them together. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Wilfred, for this uh, very comprehensive uh, summary of the different activities related to the quality control and maintenance from the point of view of different associations and, and organizations. So now is the time for questions. But before to uh, start with the questions from the audience, in order to give Time to the people that have followed your presentation to, to propose the, the questions. I will start with one question from my side. Uh, it's, of course, it's a, it's a general question and it's mainly related to this, uh, to this, uh, to looking at the, uh, at the coordination of these activities. No, uh, you have shown that uh, you are involved in, uh, in Aerostruck, you are involved in YAPSE, you are involved in FIB. Uh, myself, Probably we are in the same in the same uh, uh, committees and so on. Probably also uh, Professor Schatz is also involved in some of them, and probably also people from the audience they belong also to different of these associations and committees. And uh, 
my, my question is a little bit about the coordination of all these activities, because it seems to me that it's always the same people working in similar things, but in different parts, in different associations. So I would like to know from you, what is your opinion, your feeling about the, I mean, if you, if you are happy with the coordination between these different bodies involved in the same, in the same subjects, and normally with the same people involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the one I know, uh, some of this organization focus, of course, in the different directions. So, for instance, FRB in the concrete structure, YAPS in general engineering structures. So, uh, I think there is already an interaction. I think it's good that the people are working uh, in the different organizations and also can exchange knowledge. Uh, I think it's somehow required, um, or it's an unnecessary, how to say, Sometimes you can, uh, you can make an argument that um, uh, it would be better that everybody works together in, in a big organization there. But I think then it's very difficult to organize it to finally also to find some, uh, some results. And because already in this small organization, like in the Commission 3 or the task group 3.1 to 3.5, it's very difficult to, to coordinate between the groups and also to keep still the interaction there. So in case it is much more broader, I think then uh, it's really could become a mess. So at least we can define in each of the small groups a little bit the results. And from time to time uh, that the YAPS or FIB have to get a uh, conference, for instance, or an, an exchange, I think that uh, would, in my opinion, would be uh, preferable. Okay, thank you. So, Maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, Eleni, if you want to make a question. Maybe just a transfer, since we already have a first question from the audience, just to transfer this for Al to Alfred. Uh, this comes from uh, Blaise Girardin from the SBB Infrastructure Department. And the question is, uh, why is there not a quantitative risk-based approach with selected parameters? And what is the viewpoint of Alfred, Alfred on that topic? Uh, on risk-based maintenance planning? Uh, is the risk approach expressed as a PF times the summation of CI not a fair performance indicator? This is the question. Mm -hmm. I think that the risk-based approach, uh, of course, we have now uh, in this graph that I showed is uh, based on the one side on prediction models. Uh, of course, it can also a risk-based approach. Uh, it's somehow related to the vulnerable zones to detect which are the, the critical zones. And then, uh, of course, I can include the, the timeline. And I can also make an assessment about the, uh, yeah, the safety issues and then the, the, the damages that are caused. We can, uh, in this framework, I, I have the opinion it still can be implemented, the risk basis uh, approach, or is already somehow implemented. And, uh, uh, it is not an, uh, it is not different to a risk based approach in my opinion thank you i think this is clear and maybe um, uh, just to add a, a small uh, question on my side because you're still on this slide so i think this is nice what you do refer here to digitalization as the end of the path so yes. I would like to ask you, what are, what are the digitalization aspects that are included in this concept or the steps that you see for reaching that uh, goal mm -hmm. more concretely? I think in my, in my opinion, the digitalization can be here in different, uh, different variations. So it can be on one on database. It can be somehow also an inspection, optimized inspection by, for instance, drone systems, or it could be also somehow, yeah, some value that you get from a, or, or like, like a BIM system, like a building information system that you can store in particular essential in information from your performance indicators in the database. And then finally, this helps you later on uh, to assess the next steps or to, to assess the degradation process or the damage process. So this I understand on the digitalization. I understand also that we exactly get uh, information from the structure about the geometry, about the materials, about, for instance, also the durability, input data, and uh, also environmental data. So these data somehow at the moment are not that easy 
that you can obtain from uh, from some uh, drawings or some drawings missing and so on. I think with the digitalization, so on the one thing that you have uh, data about the geometry, about the condition that at the new uh, the new stage, and that you can uh, just collect over the lifetime. I think this I understand over there. But I, I would assume, given also my own interest, you know, in monitoring, that you would include this in this picture, the possibility to have sensor Correct. information or either periodic yes. or continuous, whatever the form would add to this uh, data set, I guess. Monitoring, of course, is an, uh, also a big field and also the, the traffic loads, traffic flow, for instance, all these parts. I think the big challenge is to somehow organize this information and to make it really accessible for all. But yeah, you are right, yeah. Jean, I think you're muted because I see you are trying to ask a yeah. question perhaps. Yeah, yes, I have, sorry. I have uh, one question is related to the, uh, what do you think is the, is the main advantage of the of the framework proposed by the cost action compared to the normal inspection or quality control tools already available in the different countries in Europe? So I think yes, yeah, so I think the main framework is uh, that we have somehow homogenized this over here. So with the performance indicators, it makes it possible to compare it. Also, it makes possible that making a uh, over Europe and education program and a training program. We are exactly, we have exact rules how to make an assessment, evaluation, and then an asset management uh, system. So I think uh, that helps us and we can learn from one country to the next country and also in the development of a uh, unique standard, for instance, for, for Europe. I think this is, in my opinion, one of the big advantage. And as soon as you have it over the whole car, over whole Europe, I think then also the research that is now in different countries at the moment and then very small in very small groups can be also spread it or can be used in such a uh, uh, unified or homogenized uh, framework. Perhaps before we proceed with another question, I want to remind the audience to send questions to the Eurostruct Association account. Um, this is a request by our, our administrator. And then maybe another question from me is, uh, how far do you think the concept is already implemented in practice? And so basically the idea you present or the ideas you put, uh, that, that have been put together also as part of this cost action. There are of course ideas, but the intention is for them to be actionable, to find application in practice. How far do you think we are at that, uh, in this respect? So again, uh, from two or three countries, I know that uh, at the moment uh, uh, there is and uh, there are the first steps of uh, implementing this uh, system. So I, I know the, for instance, in Austria, they they are also now elaborating a little bit the system and, and trying to uh, to use it. Uh, in particular, in some project where we are, they. They just uh, get more and more interest in this uh, system. I also heard from some uh, some countries which are now uh, just building up their inspections, their new inspection programs and asset management programs. That they use already our documents, or for instance, the working group three and working group four documents that they are using it as a basis at the moment. So I think we are on the now on the first steps there. And uh, the idea to link the inspection with reliability concepts and with performance and quality control brands will come now in the next five, 10 years, I think, uh, will speed, speed up. Thank you. Yeah, Alfred, another question regarding the, the results of the, of the cost action. I mean, yes. uh, now uh, every country, every stakeholder, they have uh, the, their uh, inspectors and of course in order to get these inspections they need a special education. No? So there is a training program for these inspectors in different countries. Uh, do you think that the approach proposed by the cost action and the results of this action uh, 
We need uh, some, there are some special education needs for the inspectors, apart from the things that they already uh, have in the normal, in the normal operation. I mean, is, is there any need for uh, uh, new education skills for the, for the inspectors? I, I think, uh, yeah, um, in particular, what we learned was in the group one, group two, and group three, I think this information would be very helpful for the inspectors. So from that right point, uh, the inspectors should have this information, how to define the indicators, the performance indicators, what is necessary for the assessment. On the other side, I know also that uh, in most of the countries, they already established very good inspection programs. And uh, uh, I think it should be also a, 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 a way back to us to see, okay, how uh, our concept must be perhaps also adjusted a little bit in order to take care of what is already existing on the local level. Some of the countries have already very, uh, very strict rules to see, okay, how we fit in these rules. Some of the countries are very open or just have very few documents. Some of the countries have about uh, 600, 800 pages of inspection documents. So I think it's still, it will be still a process. And I think uh, from such training schools, we can, uh, of course, with uh, the concept of ability, performance indicators, we can teach them. We can also see how they can focus, perhaps they can reflect their concepts. And of course, also for us, it will be important to have this interaction then and to see in the training schools, what, is, what are their requirements exactly in their country. Okay, so uh, I don't see by now questions from the audience. I don't know if you or Lani have someone. I do. So there is one more uh, question, uh, which is, allow me to read it because it's a lengthy one. So is it, it is true that all um, uh, associations are now focusing uh, on existing infrastructure Although this is a key issue for more mature or more developed countries, the same does not apply for under the undeveloped or underdeveloped countries uh, where the construction of new infrastructure is still a need. So the question is, how do you plan to transfer the knowledge from the outcomes of these associations to those undeveloped countries? And what would be the main recommendations in this respect from, uh, from your side? Oh, okay, it's a tricky question. <laughs> okay, I know, uh, so I know now the, the activities of the, so of course the association parts are focusing on the existing structure and in particular what I presented today. I know also the FIB model code and also IATS is uh, trying to present the, the working groups and trying also to include the people from a countries from all over the world in the organization. So the idea is not to separate, but it's, it's, it's the opposite. The, uh, we are, for instance, the Commission 3, we are forced to get from uh, at least all continents some people so that we can uh, get the knowledge and also the up-to-date uh, situation point in these countries and to include this in our development. So it is uh, somehow, if there are countries that are, for instance, uh, in with respect to system structures have some uh, not that developed concepts, and uh, we are, they are very, they are welcome. So also that we learn from them a little bit what is the situation for at the moment and what is their needs there. So, and I think also in the APSA, in this organization, uh, uh, there is also the same, uh, uh, the same idea of philosophy to include as much as possible all countries and to see what is the status and then finally to, to uh, create some specific level and a standard level. So that is my, my impression and my opinion about the organization. Or the Eurostruct, I think we have the same idea and the same philosophy. Thank you. Just to note, this was a question from Jose Matos, uh, from Jose uh, Matos, actually. I think it's a good point on that separation and how to treat this. Uh, the last, okay. The last, I could not catch the last question. No, no, me. I'm saying, I'm just transferring that this question was from ah, Jose okay. Matos and it was a very good point. 
Yeah, speaking of that kind of separation, there is also another, you know, domain where there is some sort of distinction, and this is between academics and, let's say, the scientific community and practice, the engineering practice. Perhaps a question there is, what tasks do you see on the part of the scientific community, and what are the tasks of uh, practice? Um, yeah. So I think the there are a lot of scientific uh, communities working on uh, very high sophisticated models and uh, from uh, I think the models are just very good and uh, I think what what is a necessary step there is what we try in the apps in the 5.4 to close the gap a little bit to say okay, what is the engineering what is the engineering uh, situation at the moment and to see what are the interfaces that must be uh, fulfilled in order to bring these models into practice. And I think on the other side, from the practical engineers uh, or from practice side, I see also the, I think there is already a very good interaction to the research, to the university, to you know, research institutions. But I think such, a, for instance, conferences or even, even small projects to understand the different parties from research and practice, I think it's a very important. So, uh, and I think we are in a good uh, time at the moment uh, where this process is start to work. So, this uh, from a lab, from a part of the in the in the members, that uh, there is a willingness from the practical side and also from the research side to interact. Alfred, uh, I have another question from the audience. The question is that uh, what recommendations do you have for infrastructure managers to implement the proposed concepts? Uh, I would say the first step is to follow this uh, training uh, programs that uh, the Eurostruct or COST already set it up to understand the concepts. And then I think uh, there should be a small group of uh, the people who were active in the cost action to work with this uh, infrastructure st uh, stakeholders together and to see what is what they have already developed and then which way it can be implemented. So that is my, would be my, my first suggestion. So I think it, it must be a step-by-step -step process. Uh, you cannot give it over the, the framework and say, okay, please implement it. I think it should be somehow a smooth process of a specific time of a period of time. Uh, perhaps a question on my side is how extendable do you think the proposed framework is? So is it limited to bridge networks, which was really the focus of the cost action? Do you find application in broader systems also given your uh, experience across different types of structural uh, systems? Yeah, we are definitely, I think it's extendable. So we are at the moment transferring the concept to some uh, components from a railway system. So we are not only uh, working here, for instance, on the bridge structures. Uh, these are more or less steel, uh, small steel components. And there is uh, the idea to base the, the inspection and the assessment and then the lifetime assessment the durability concept. And finally, com combine it with monitoring and consequence classes. So I think uh, from that side, we are absolutely open. We can uh, just uh, uh, apply the concept on small components up to big structures networks. So for my, I think it's open. It's really an open system. And you can include monitoring, inspection, deeper testing, or numerical uh, digital twins. Also this information can be used for your predictions and for your, uh, for instance, uh, yeah, this, this degradation processes to, to just uh, analyze the degradation processes. By now, I don't have any new question from the audience. I don't know, Eleni, if you have some? No, uh, I don't see any uh, additional question. Okay. So no. if, if there are no more questions from the audience, but it seems it's the case. 
I propose you Alani to go and close the session. Uh, yes, maybe a closing statement for, from Alfred on something I meant to ask, uh, just to, to get his opinion is, you discussed a bit on uh, assimilation of data, of uh, monitoring uh, uh, digital twins, building information models. What do you think is the role of machine learning in this respect? And do you believe that this kind of aptitude, this kind of skill should now be a skill that uh, civil engineers actually have as part of their educational program? Um, I think, yeah. Um, we, yes, we, we also uh, somehow try to create here some groups, uh, also together with some uh, industrial partners. It, I think it is a very important, it is an important skill. It depends if it is, should be already in the education program, pro program of civil engineers. Uh, but I think uh, with respect to the digitalization, with respect to this topic that we have uh, in future time left with information and with all this data and to interpret data, I think uh, in master programs or of course in PhD programs it should be implemented and then uh, it will also get a part in the engineering uh, community then. I agree. Um, so I want to thank you for this statement. I will follow the invitation of Joanne and close the talk by thanking everyone uh, who has uh, attended and informing once again that there is a running Eurostruct survey. Uh, it will be on Facebook. It's already activated. We wish to ask you to complete the survey uh, if possible um, and help us gather information. Um, a few more announcements on the first, the IAPS online conference, which will run from the 2nd to the 3rd of September, 2020. Uh, an announcement that the call for abstracts is now open for the IAPS 2021 symposium in Ghent uh, in the next year. Uh, there is a FIB symposium, which was rescheduled from 22nd to 24th of November, 2021, and will be online. And finally, since this was also mentioned during the talk, there will be a Eurostruct training course. I think we discussed how important training uh, follow-up activities are, and this will be online again uh, due to the present situation from the 2nd to the 4th of September 2020. You can register for this. The registration is already open, and it will be open until the end of July, so you have a few more weeks. And the, Euro, the first Eurostruct 2021 conference uh, is also um, official. It will be held in Padua, Italy from the 29th to the 31st of August 2021. Uh, so you, you can expect uh, uh, an announcement for the call for abstracts very soon. And just to close with the announcement of the next two uh, upcoming talks on July 24th at 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time again by Ralf Holst from BAST on improvement of bridge inspection in Germany. And then on the 27th of July, shortly after that, one hour earlier with Colin Caprani from Melbourne University on probabilistic modeling of traffic loading for higher tier assessment of bridges. The two talks are quite closely spaced, so the registration uh, for these will be sent jointly. Please keep your eyes open and uh, do join us for these next events. Joan, I give you the floor uh, for a last word. <laughs> No, just uh, to thank uh, Alfred again, and also you, Eleni, for moderating this session. Thank you for this, and of course, thank you for the to the audience. And uh, we'll see each other in the next uh, Eurostruck uh, live talk uh, next week. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. All right. Thank you.